Martin Dominic Steele here and we're talking the debate today about evangelism and one-to-one -one evangelism or course-based evangelism. Uh, our guests are Tony Wright and Sam Hilton. They're both leaders in the evangelistic space in Australia. But before we get to Tony and Sam, uh, it actually takes a lot to develop the pastor's heart each week. There's production costs, video, audio editing, uh, mixing, social media, website, those kind of things. And we're working hard to support and reach more Christian leaders, but we need your help to move this ministry to the next level. Uh, we have ideas for growth, but we need to make things sustainable first. Uh, and so if the pastor's heart has helped you, can I encourage you or challenge you uh, to head over to patreon.com slash the pastor's heart and to sign up as a supporter. And I reckon $5 a month would be a good place to start. Now, one-to-one -one courses, evangelism, uh, one-to-one and course evangelism. And uh, Tony Wright, uh, ambassador for the Word One to One. I'm the, the manager for the Word One to One in Australia. In yep. Australia and with City Bible Forum. And Sam Hilton, mission pastor at Hunter Bible Church right. in yep. Newcastle. And uh, and look, I've got an interest in this whole space. I was involved in One to One ministry and small group ministry with Christians in the media for a long time. And then wrote Introducing God. And so I've got kind of a foot in either of those camps. Um, now. Uh, Let's start with you, Tony, because you set the cat amongst the pigeons um, over Christmas with a critique on course-based evangelism. Uh, but why don't I ask you to start with, um, well, what are the positives, but also the problems with one-to-one -one evangelism? Yeah, um, well, there's lots of positives. Uh, there's a flexibility about one-to-one -one that, that you can meet in a different place, a different location. Uh, you can get to different kinds of people who might not be ready to come on a course. Um, and it's kind of a, a scattered, lots of different people can give it a go mm -hmm. and try it for themselves. It's not centralised on a, um, a staff member or a particularly gifted mm -hmm. uh, evangelist. The, the downsides are is that um, from a church's or church pastor's perspective, it's hard to know if it's going on or happening because it's scattered and out there. So there's not... Um, you kind of might end up in this where we are hoping that evangelism is going on, but you're not really sure, um, and so that's that's a challenge. And um, I guess momentum as well. People might start enthusiastically for a while, and then if it drops off again, if you're not quite sure what's happening, um, how do you kind of continue to motivate and encourage and push your Christian people along, your Christian folk in in doing it and and persisting? It's kind of a solo sport rather than a team sport exactly yep. yeah yeah what did we what did you say um sam on positives and negatives of one-to-one -one evangelism um I, I think it's really exciting mm -hmm. uh, to personally be involved in that and mm -hmm. to actually be sitting down with someone across a table in a, in a cafe or maybe in your home setting or wherever it might be and opening the bible with them reading through the bible watching the light bulb moments happen mm -hmm. before your eyes i think that's a really exciting thing to, for people to be involved in um, I personally really enjoy doing that, mm. um, and yeah, I think if we're able to train people to do more of that and to have the courage to actually invite their friend to read the scriptures, you know, the Word of God mm. is what transforms mm -hmm. people's lives. So uh, yeah, definitely for one-to-one -one evangelism. Uh, I guess one of the uh, uh, problems with it that I see, uh, or difficulties with it, is that um, moving people from the space of one-to-one -one, uh, into uh, a growth group setting or a church setting can, all, can, can often be problematic. Too many potholes on that journey. Yeah, yep. often quite a lot of potholes on that journey. And um, so that takes quite a bit of skill to kind of navigate and to work through. Um, and, and even and more so, I think, in a city like Sydney compared to a city like Newcastle where... Um, I might be doing one-to-one -one evangelism with a, a friend at work, mm. but then I go to church on the northern side of the city and they, if they were to go to a church, it would yeah. be 40 kilometres south. Or it's, whereas in Newcastle, just smaller geography. Yeah, yeah certainly. I, I think you could make a case for and against. Mm -hmm. um, that they wouldn't be reached anyway. They wouldn't be reached anyway. Because they wouldn't have got to your church to do the course. That's right, yeah. yeah. So I think, I mean, my memory of doing evangelism when I was at university was through the AFES ministry mm -hmm. there. I met a number of people who weren't Christians, obviously, and um, wanted to invite them to church uh, and invite them along to things, but they lived in Sutherland, mm -hmm. some of them, and I was in West Pennant Hills. Mm -hmm. 
and so you know that's a that's an hour and a half drive or yeah. something like that. Mm. And so um, how are they going to come to your how church? How are they going to come to my church? So yeah. the neutral space of I lived, I lived in West Bend Hills too. Yeah. <laughs> you could have invited me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, that's some positives and negatives on one to one. Positives and negatives on core space evangelism. Let's start again with you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, look, I've I've run a whole range of different courses, and I really like them. Um, there's, and I've seen people become Christian sort of either through them or in, in mm -hmm. the follow up from them. So they do um, work well in in drawing people together. Uh, means you, uh, a number of uh, Christian people can be involved in a number of different levels in mm -hmm. the enterprise of putting on a course and good courses present the gospel clearly and well uh, compellingly if you particularly if you're using a DVD or video type mm -hmm. situation it means the presenter can kind of say the hard stuff and and the, the group can kind of bounce around the questions that are raised sort of by an independent third person almost mm -hmm. um, and so you can kind of engage um, at that level so I think they're, they're great um, in that regard so they clear uh, gospel presentation mm -hmm. and people respond. Uh, I think some of the challenges is that that might be our only thing we do. Um, it might be because they're, they're good and they kind of work, we might just kind of stop there and not be doing other um, kind of evangelistic enterprises. I think lots of churches can find it hard to get enough people together to make a course kind of work. Um, so if you've only got a small number of people who are able to kind of come together, then the, the course doesn't have the same uh, energy and vibe. Um, and people find, you know, if they miss the first week, you might, that can be hard for them to come. But if they miss the first two weeks, the opportunity's gone and they've got to wait till it kind of comes around again. So, um, you know, if they can't make and set aside two hours a week on a Tuesday night for 10 weeks, um, they can struggle to kind of come under the sound of the gospel mm -hmm. in, in that way. Mm -hmm. On introducing God, you've got to be there by the third week. Third week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although, not so the life course, I think it's it's faster, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, it's a bit faster. So, I mean, you could come to the third week, but uh, you're kind of coming in at the hardest. Yeah, yeah. You're coming the in week, on the sin. It's, it's judgment, the, the, the fourth week. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So it's a very difficult night to come mm. to as your first introduction. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yep. yeah. Strengths, weaknesses, courses? Uh, I think one of the, the great things about it is... is when you bring your non-Christian friend along, then they are not only seeing you uh, engage with the, the Bible and be thinking about those big ideas, but they also uh, get to meet other people who are Christian. So there's a Christian community thing going on there that I think is really important and really helps that transition then into church at a later date. Um, once they finish that series and do a follow-up series, by that stage we're always pumping church and trying to say to them, come along and visit mm -hmm. us at church. And, and by the time they get to church, they walk into church and they go, oh, I know that person, that person, mm -hmm. that person, because they ran the series that, mm -hmm. that I went along to. Um, so I think that's a real positive. I think the other thing that's a real positive is... Um, the level of evangelistic action that needs to be, you know, the prerequisite for, for getting somebody along to a life series or introducing God series is, would you like to come mm. and find out more about Jesus? Okay, so you can get halfway through a conversation, feel stuck, and go, look, we run this great series at our church, and this is a great opportunity for you to come along, you can ask all your questions that you want there. And so you get people who are maybe not quite as bold uh, actually engaging in the process of evangelism and then they do evangelism alongside our table leaders or the course leader or whatever it might be um, and actually get emboldened in, in evangelism further mm. as, they, as they do that. Mm. Uh, so there's a couple of positives. One of the drawbacks is I think I think the big drawback is is when we just think plug and play, uh, mm -hmm. introducing God. All I need to do is put it on and people will come. Uh, there's a lot of preparation that needs to mm. go in before that, uh, after that. And, um, and if that's your only um, evangelistic uh, effort mm -hmm. to run a course, uh, then what you'll find is after the first couple of times you've run it as a church, 
you'll probably run out of invitations mm -hmm. to get people. Because if they're not, if we're not out there scooping for people, That's if we're right. not out there looking for people yeah. to uh, become Christian, <laughs> yeah. then there's going to be nobody to come to the course. That's right. Yeah. So you might have. So you have to have high evangelistic temperature amongst your members. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what was your critique, Tony? Um, I've, in my role, I get to speak to lots of uh, different ministers, and so I think the critique of those is twofold. One is of those churches who uh, <coughs> focus primarily or, or almost singly on running a course, um, and. Um, you know, that sort of the funnel approach, you might run in a big event and then we funnel people into our course and then they would kind of funnel them into church. Mm -hmm. That it might be that, um, A, it can take a long time for people to move from event to course. And so I was suggesting maybe in between the two, there's space for something like a one-to-one -one Bible reading mm -hmm. in an evangelistic setting. Um, but also some of those churches that are big and running good courses are, it seem to me uh, apprehensive or scared to add in something like one-to-one um, -one Bible reading in case it upsets the course. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this course and if we, if we introduce this other element, will that detract mm -hmm. from people? And uh, I suppose in my two articles I was trying to say, look, that they should work together, uh, one feeding into the other or possibly one as, as follow-up from the other. A number of people said even on the course people are not, might not become a Christian. Uh, that might be long enough for them to consider. So this is one-to-one uh, -one does move at a slower pace, it moves at the pace of the person and so you're able to kind of um, build in more Bible um, I I into that kind of interaction with the, the, mm -hmm. other, the other person. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's lots of churches that aren't running courses well mm -hmm. or, or struggling like saying before to get them up and so something like um, one-to-one -one Bible reading might indeed raise that evangelistic temperature. So I speak to lots of churches where they say, we put on an event and we know no one comes, but we do it to keep it on the agenda, keep evangelism on the agenda. And so you go, well, it's, it's good that you've got a commitment to that, but if, if no one's coming, a, it's not really... That's a pretty disappointing strategy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's sort of a, a better than nothing, but we're trying. And so there is, I think, um, kind of lots of hard soil, particularly in Sydney, so people do find it hard. Um, even lots of people who run courses, they'll kind of cut them down because people won't commit to a 10-week course. So they go, oh, I'll take my 10-week course and make it seven or seven and make it four. And even in a cut down a bridge version, it's not long enough for somebody to grapple with the gospel, to consider who is Jesus, who are them, and become a Christian. So you find people run a, might run a short course, you get lots of people on it, but then kind of you're left at the please consider this more and there's not kind of an, a clear next step beyond come to church. And I'm saying something like one-to-one, -one advanced reading, Bible reading with a friend you brought along or the friend you want to invite along might kind of raise that temperature for that person as mm -hmm. they consider Jesus for themselves. Mm. Mm. Sam? So, Any comments on what Tony just said there? Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, I think the second one in particular is something that uh, when I speak to people who are, looking to run an evangelistic series. Mm. Um, that's one of the big things that we try to, to make sure that they have a plan for. What do you do out the back end of a series? So mm -hmm. our life series runs for six weeks now. Um, so what do you do out the back of that? What do you run? Um, because during those first five or six weeks, it's unlikely that a person who is, you know, this might be the first time they've really engaged with the big idea mm. of the gospel. It's unlikely that they will have become a Christian at that point yeah. and so we want to say make sure you've got a plan out the back end uh, have someone ready to go who can take them through the next series or maybe it might be your word one-to-one -one kind of style one -one the complexity? I mean I think that point's right yeah. that someone comes along and we find maybe a third to half the people of, of the people who have joined the course and properly joined like yep. they're, they're still there the third week of that group, about half, a third to a half have come to Christ by the end of the seven weeks. Mm. Um, and then the other half trickle into the kingdom over the next six to 12 months if the relationships hold together. Do you know, absolutely key is that the relationships mm. hold together so that there's a, a continued ongoing relational pathway. Yep. Um, and. But often they'll come to church somewhere along that, that I mean, it won't be well. that their first time to church won't be, will be 12 months time when they've committed to Christ. Yep. Quite when they become part of the community and, that, and when they've actually come to Christ is all a bit vague. Yeah. 
Yeah, certainly. Yeah, that certainly what we we tend to see. And, and if, if I find if we can if we can hold them together in a cohesive unit, then they're caring for each other, encouraging each other, talking to each other. Whereas obviously, as you're saying, some of them they're not going to keep going in that unit, and so we've got to do one to one. Yep. But but I'd say the more you can hold them together in a unit, the better rather than have them scatter. Would you disagree mm. agree with that? No, no, that makes, yep, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And in terms of resources, what about the training impact? Um, the training impact of on the course on the Christians who are hosting it, yeah, or part of it in some way. Yeah. Um, the training impact for for those who are involved in the course. In the process, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, has it or I mean, they've I've, invited them a friend along. It could be or, they've invited a friend and they're a Christian host or yep. they're just somehow doing the cooking or something. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I think what, one of the things that they get to do is they get to sit alongside somebody on a t who's, who we call a table leader mm -hmm. and is quite experienced in talking to people about mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. the Bible, um, what the gospel is all about, asking questions trying to understand their worldview, where they're coming from, what their past with Christianity is all about. Um, and they get to, to see that take place. And I guess it's modeled to them, uh, both at the table, but then they also get it modeled to them in question time. So we have a question time after Modeled our, how to do the gospel conversation. Well, really? modeled how to answer some of those questions that they're sitting there going. I don't know how to answer that. Mm -hmm. And so the questions come up and they go, oh, there is an answer. And it actually builds confidence mm -hmm. for that person in the gospel, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a tremendous thing. And what we actually hear a lot of is the conversations on the way home in the car, especially the first two weeks, mm -hmm. are better than the conversations that took place at the table. Because, you know, the guest is a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous those first couple of weeks. And so the, the trip home in the car, though, the fight mm. gates open, they start asking all these questions, they have these great conversations. I get text messages at 11 p.m. at night mm -hmm. um, from friends going, I just dropped my friend home, it was amazing. We <laughs> sat in the car for an hour and talked. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... And it's, quickly it's, you find that the night of introducing God for the non-Christian has become the most exciting night of the week. Hmm. Do you know? Because everything else I'm talking about is trivia. Do you know? Yeah, and I think right. that would be the case with the one to one study as well. Do you know? This is the most exciting hour of the week. Yeah. Because I'm getting to talk life, the universe, God, heaven, hell, mm. those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the something like the word one to one, which puts the Bible there, questions and answers, and is used in, say, a regular, you know, kind of coffee shop conversation, mm -hmm. gives kind of uh, a deeper more significant weight to, to conversation mm. that might otherwise just, you know, chat about the sport or the weather mm. or what have you. You're going to get deeper with that person. Yeah. Then. And yeah. you're engaging with real, like, real deep, significant things. Mm -hmm. You're encountering Jesus uh, in the scriptures. And so that just deepens the relationship one to another, but uh, pushes people to think maybe in a way that they haven't before. So what would your ideal church model for evangelistic strategy be, Tony? There's um, a big free kick. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think we, um, in my second article, I sort of say that there's four different approaches we have. Uh, one is you kind of regular in the church preaching, people come to you, um, you know, week by week in mm -hmm. church, uh, maybe a special guest speaker or a particular mm -hmm. evangelistic focus. So, kind of drawing people in. Uh, you might do a rally or a conference uh, where you gather together with other churches. Um, you know, KCC has done that sort of over the years, had an evangelistic talk. Um, on a particular night or an event. I think in our regular church life... I think running those things are actually almost completely ineffective. Yes. That's number two one. Yeah. 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 But there's still... Um, I mean, the Franklin Graham might... Crusade, waste of time. Yes. If, I mean, if, uh, God might raise up another yeah. Billy Graham mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. um, and you might still, it's not a bad strategy. You might need to figure out how you make it work. I think our churches, the courses are great. But what I'd love to see is a focus or on that... Um, personal evangelism, so that we not only kind of, all those things are sort of attractional, come to us, come to our building, come to our meeting, come to mm -hmm. our rally, to train and raise up our people to kind of send them out. And so you can go, because people do live in networks, they don't all live in your suburb, not everyone's going to come to your church. So to send them out and say, you, you are confident to read the word, to say to somebody, would you like to read the Bible with me? And you've got the material to be able to sit down and have a chat with your friend, with your acquaintance, somebody who you're in contact with, wherever they are at. And so we're sending people out to go to where people are. So you've got an attractional focus to your strategy, 
and a missional focus yeah. to your strategy. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and your missional, lots of our churches talk about well, you're going out mission. focus. Yeah, yeah, they talk about mission as what we do overseas when we send somebody far away, but we could be sending our people to into the city to evangelise somebody from, you know, the, the Sutherland Shire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's missional. That's still mm -hmm. mission. Um, and even having the problem of them not coming to your church is a good problem to have. You, you, you know, if they do mm -hmm. become a Christian, let's try and find them a good church to join and be a part of, and and figure out that problem, uh, rather than saying, well, because I don't know where I'll take them to church, I won't share the gospel with them. <coughs> Um, so, yeah. which is where I think Newcastle is a very different city. Mm. Everything's twenty minutes. Mm. Yeah, uh, and you know. So basically, wherever you are in Newcastle, you, you can, can drive. You to can Hunter drive Church. to Hunter Bible Church. Like, yeah, and, and we've planted down the lake, which is fifteen minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, and people, you know, there's a, there's a psychological barrier to you know to cross, come from the lake into the city, or from the city down to the lake. But really, it's a psychological barrier. It's mm. not actually a, a, a problem on a Sunday, especially. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so maybe those, those couple of things are a little bit different about where we live. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you're saying, actually, the attractional strategy is going to work even better in a place like Newcastle than the missional strategy. Yeah, and, but at the same time, you're wanting to send people out into the city of Newcastle um, looking for opportunities to share the gospel yep. with their friends. Yep. And so uh, we're constantly urging our people to be praying mm -hmm. uh, for their friends. So uh, regularly we'll talk about praying for three friends. Um, who are your friends? And so you want to be able to, in your growth groups and in your one-to-one one -one Bible reading that you might be doing with another Christian person or something like that. You're wanting to be So one-to-one -one Bible reading them, is part of your strategy. So. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. How does that work? Yeah. It's it's probably uh, more pervasive in our university context um, because people have more time there. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do a lot of one-to-one -one, uh, with one another mm -hmm. uh, or some of our core leaders will be met up with one-to-one -to, -one to kind of develop them and grow them. Uh, but we also want to encourage people to be reading the Bible one-to-one -one with people who are not Christians mm -hmm. and we actually get the most mileage out of that when we do walk up on campus. Right. So walk up on campus often turns into one-to-one -one Bible reading. Yep. Um, that will often turn into you should also come along to our life series and so they get this kind of dual focus. Mm -hmm. We're reading the Bible one-to-one -one, but we're also going along to the life series because sometimes it might be five or six weeks before the next series kicks mm -hmm. off or whatever it might mm. be. That's an interesting point. How frequently do you run the courses? Uh, well, we, we run it four times a year. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we run it four times a year um, in various locations. So we, we run it at our lake congregation now and we also run it back up in the Newcastle precinct. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so it's eight different series that people could get along to mm -hmm. uh, which means that it's pretty regular yep. um, and if you're having a conversation with someone uh, if you, or if you've got a friend then you or you always know there's a there's a life series yeah just around the corner I mean, we're actually um, we're smaller than you significantly smaller but we ran it seven times last year and ran introducing yeah. God seven times yeah. now some of them were on a Sunday morning parallel to church we worked yep. out we had a whole lot of shift workers so we, that was the time we were going to do it, and with the view that they might actually hopefully transition into church afterwards. Yep. Others were on Monday nights, um, and we ran a couple of them in parallel times to our playgroup. We just had a whole lot of playgroup mums, yeah. and we thought, ah, oh, we could, we'll look yeah. after your kids in the playgroup while we run Introducing God in the next room. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been running Christianity Explored in those kind of mm -hmm. settings, in the playgroup sort of settings, and at our what we call women's growth group. Mm -hmm which meets on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And we've seen a number of women become Christians through yep. that. Mm -hmm. And usually what they do is they go through Christianity Explored and then we work out where they're at after that and do they need to continue to read the Bible in a small group or one-to-one -one setting with somebody f for a little while uh, before we push them into uh, our membership series and then growth groups mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, 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 sounds good. Right. 
What were you unhappy with, with the Reach Australia presentation? Um, I think, um, I think um, what, what I heard was a strong focus on, we, we run an event, like a, an outreach or a, a light gospel touch event, and it can take a long time for somebody to kind of finally be ready to drop onto a course. So we, we keep running these kind of events until that person's um, ready to drop on. Now, now in, in the talk it does mention following people up and individuals who've come to things, but it is still that let's put on an event so attract people to us and then attract them to our course. And I'm saying that's that's great, but I think you need a certain <coughs> size momentum to kind of do that well, particularly, you know, to, to have that funnel work for you. And I think the smaller, um, e either for a large church or smaller church, not not doing any kind of focus on one-to-one -one evangelism beyond, mm. um, beyond having a conversation. Lots of our, when we talk about personal evangelism, we mean we train somebody in two ways to live or, or something similar, which gives you a good conversation to have with somebody and once you've had that good conversation the next step is come to my course come to my church and what I think something like one-to-one -one Bible reading does for you with the word one-to-one -one or other models is it just gives you um, more steps along the way to help people kind of come to grips with the scriptures for themselves because many people after a conversation aren't ready to join a course or aren't ready to come to church and so you I think we didn't miss I, I didn't hear that at uh, reach, and so I felt we, we, we're missing um, uh, a, a kind of a, a group of people who are out there who are not quite ready for a course. So that's why people cut down courses because people aren't ready to commit for that well, length of time. So can you? I don't think anybody commits for seven weeks. They come along for one week, and if sure. they like it, they like it, they keep coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. no one. We, we never tell them, come along for a seven-week course. We say, come along, we've got our Introducing God course starting up sure. next week. Come and check it out. It looks, yeah, yep. yeah. See if you like and it. So mm. we, we never mention how long it is. Mm. But I do think you get to the end of seven weeks and they're only just starting to get yeah. it. And, so, and they're actually keen for more. And they're, and they're keen for more, yeah. yeah. And so uh, when I hear people saying our people won't commit to a course that's longer than four weeks or something like that, I think you are not selling it right. Mm. You, it's, it's a communication problem, mm. not a problem with the course. Yeah. Sure. I think the other thing with the, um, those events um, that are supposed to funnel people into the life of a church, one of the things that you can, you potentially can take away from that is, is that it's all about events, mm -hmm. but I would say those events are actually all about relationships. Yeah, the scaffolding for relationships. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so your, your, your big carols event that we run, which you came along mm. to. Yeah, it was holidays. great. It was great. Yeah. Um, we had um, a little friend of my daughter's. She came along with her mum and dad. Um, they couldn't stay for the whole thing because they had a little tiny baby. but. I got to meet Dad for the first time. Mm. We had a great conversation, um, and then they came along. We were able to make an invitation. The next invitation to our Wave Kids Club was super easy, and so we said, "Oh, why don't you come along to the Wave Kids Club?" And she came along to that, and and Mum sat in the tent, and Dad came along as well on his day off, and sat in the tent, and we had a, a wonderful conversation about their. Catholic upbringing and what that was like and what they thought of church now and they're actually quite interested in coming along to church and just as schools kicked back off I've re-engaged with them and said oh, you should come over for dinner um, and they're very keen to come and have dinner with us and that's at that point that we, we want to actually make the invitation why don't you come and join us at church and talk further about the gospel mm -hmm. so we use those events to kind of they're not just events, but they're actually, the, as you said, the scaffolding for relationships. They're all about relationships and enabling people <coughs> to have things that they can bring their friends along to where they don't just meet you for the first time, but they also meet a whole host of people who are Christians and go, oh, wow, Christianity is actually a viable option. I think mm. it's in Sam Chan's book on evangelism, um, he talks about, what does he call it? Um, does he, does he say plausibility? Plausibility I mean, that's what structures. I want to say. Yeah. yeah, plausibility structures. And so he says um, the more p Christians that people meet, 
the more plausible it seems that this is something that they could take on for themselves. And so that's why I want to argue for those events and argue for event-based evangelism is because we live in a culture where you might be the only Christian that that person knows. Mm. Um, and it's easier to write you off than it is to write a whole group of people off who mm -hmm. seem sane and reasonable and um, mm -hmm. so on. Tony, comment on that. Um, so when, when I was at Reach, I, I bumped into Fran. She runs the, the, the life course at, at her church for women. Uh, and she was buying some of the word one-to-one. -one. I said, oh, why, why are you doing that? She said, well, there's two women I know who can't get to the life course. One is just the, the times are wrong. Uh, and another lady, she's been in the past scarred by other churches. It's just too hard even to come onto a church property. Yep. So she goes, this is great for them. I, I can go to them. One's in my street, one's you know, a block or two away. Mm. And so if, if you just had come to my event, come to my course, those two women would not have got there at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But my friends are able to go to them kind of with, with the gospel, with the scriptures and sit down in you know, their home or wherever it might be in a coffee shop and still share the script, open up the scriptures mm. And, and share with them. And so I just think there's those sorts of moments and opportunities and people that if you just have the attractional model, you go, you're going to miss. Mm. Or your people commute out of Newcastle to the city. There's people there that they could, if, if all they've got is, oh, I want to invite to my thing and my place, th they're going to miss out. Mm. Um, and I think the further that people move from Christian things in our society, uh, the more ignorant they become, the more of that kind of bridge building we need to do. So when you talk about plausibility, I, I take it anyone who says yes to meet with you to read the Bible, there's a credibility about you that, that they don't think you're weird yeah, or completely strange. Like other Christians might be kind of out there, but yeah, you're yeah, okay, yeah. you're my friend or my name, I yeah. like you. There's something about I, the way you relate to people in the office. That yeah, kind of thing. yeah, and so I'll, I'll give you the, the time to, to meet with you and, and see, find out about mm. this thing that you're into. And so I think we need, um, I think the, the further society moves away from kind of Christian things and Christian understanding, the, the more space there's going to be for one-to-one, -one, going to people, um, sharing the scriptures with them, and then sort of building them up to the point where they're ready to accept an invitation to an event, which for lots of people is is a high bar. Mm. Just to come onto a church property, that's that's different, that's weird, that's mm. strange, that's hard. Um, but meeting up with you for coffee, yeah, we do that every week. So to add a bit of scripture into there, yeah, that's fine, yeah, you, this is your thing, oh, I'm happy to check it out. Sam, last comment from you. Yeah, I think that's um, perfectly good and reasonable. I think that's right. You, you want to be adaptable. Uh, one of the things that I always try to say to, to say to our people is, is when it comes to Christians, we can say Bible studies on Monday night and Tuesday night and Wednesday night, but it's not on these nights. Um, and that's okay. But if a non-Christian wants to read the Bible with you, or is interested in investigating you Christianity, meet them on we their want terms. to make sure that we do whatever we possibly can. And so we try to be, we try to run the life series, but also to try to be as nimble around the edges as we possibly mm. can. Um, and we've got a couple of really generous, godly people who uh, will go to people's homes and read the Bible with people. They usually run them through Christianity Explored, um, but um, it's a much more intimate, one-to-one -one kind of setting. Right. Hmm. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming in today. No worries. Thank you. My guest on The Pastor's Heart, Sam Hilton, the Mission Director at Hunter Bible Church in Newcastle, and Tony Wright, um, Ambassador Director for the Word One to One with the City Bible Forum in Sydney. And you've been with The Pastor's Heart, and we'll look forward to your company next week. Mm -hmm.